Okay, so here we are. We are ready with both of our files on our desktop. The first thing that we want to do is we want to install VirtualBox software. In order to create virtual machine, we must first have the software installed, so let us do that first. If we double click on it, it will start the process of installation, which should look the same whether you're running Windows, Mac OS or Linux, the process of installation VirtualBox will be the same. And it is rather easy since all we want to do is we want to click on next on each and every step, but just so we don't go next, 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 let us explain what you can do with each and every step of installation. So here, as it says under the custom setup, we want to select the way we want our features to be installed. And the only thing that you might consider changing right here is this location part. If you want to change the location of VirtualBox, you can do that right here. But since I won't be doing that, I will just click on next to proceed to the next step. Here you can select whether you want a shortcut on the desktop, whether you want start menu entries. I will leave all of this to be checked since I want all of that. And I will click on next step. For this step, it says that during the installation we might be disconnected from the internet in case you're downloading or uploading something important. So best thing you can do in that case is wait for that download or upload to finish, and then you can proceed with the installation of VirtualBox. So I will just click on yes, since I'm not doing anything important over the internet, and I will click right here on install. This will ask me for my administrative password, and since I don't have one, I will simply just click on yes, and it will start the process of installing VirtualBox. This will finish in just a few seconds, and right after it, it should open up our virtual box. So just at this last step of our installation, we want to click on finish. And in just a few seconds, this should open the virtual box. And here it is. So your window should look exactly like mine does, and what we want to do from here is we want to create the virtual machine. We're going to go onto this new button and click on it which will open this small window that will ask us for some information about our virtual machine. So under the name, we're going to specify Kali Linux, and you can name it anything you want, it doesn't have to be Kali Linux, but just in case you might have multiple machines in VirtualBox later on, you want to have them named properly so you know which machine is which. Next thing, the machine folder is something that we don't want to change, the type, we want to set on Linux, and you will notice if you typed Cal Linux, it should automatically set the type to be Linux. And the version is something that we do want to change. Now, since Cal Linux is a Debian based operating system, we want to be searching Debian right here. And here it is we got Debian 32 bit and Debian 64 bit. If you downloaded the 64 bit version of Cal Linux, you want to select right here Debian. 64 bit. And if you downloaded the 32 bit one, you would be selecting Debian 32 bit. After we got all of these options set like this, we want to click on next. And this next step is if you remember, we talked about that we need to give our hardware resources to our virtual machine. And right here, it asks us how much RAM memory are we willing to borrow to the virtual machine to use. This RAM memory will not be available. As long as our virtual machine is running, and once the virtual machine has been shut down, this RAM memory will be freed for our physical machine to use. Now, on this machine that I'm recording, I have 8 GB of RAM. So, in the best case, I want to give about 2 GB of RAM to this virtual machine. Now, I can also go up to 4 GB of RAM, but it is not really needed, and there is no point in giving half of your RAM memory to your virtual machine. So 2 GB of RAM will be more than enough for my virtual machine. If your machine has 16 GB of RAM or 32 GB of RAM, feel free to give it even more RAM memory as the more the better. And if your machine has less than 8 GB of RAM, for example it has 4 GB of RAM, then you can either go with 2 GB or you can even lower it to 1 GB of RAM. But I will simply just leave it on 2 and I will proceed to the next step. In the next step, we're creating the hard disk, so we want to select this option that says create a virtual hard disk now. And keep in mind that the recommended size of the hard disk is 8 gigabytes. 
This option will come later on, but just keep it in mind. So create the virtual hard disk now, click on create, and under the hard disk file type, we want to select VirtualBox disk image. Click on next. This next question is asking us how we want to store our data on our virtual hard disk, whether we want fixed size or dynamically allocated. Keep in mind that fixed size will probably work faster, but it will also take longer time to create, while the dynamically allocated might work a little bit slower, but it will be created a lot faster. It is completely up to you. In this case, I will simply just go with dynamically allocated and I will click on next. And here is where we choose the virtual hard disk size and the file location. So here you can change the location of your virtual hard disk or simply of your virtual machine. And down here, you can select how much gigabytes you want to give to your virtual machine to use as a hard disk. It's said before that 8 gigabytes is recommended, but I would advise you to not go below 20 gigabytes. For the purposes of this course, I will even go up to 30 gigabytes, but you don't really have to if you don't want. Just keep in mind that you might be using this machine later on, even after this course, and you might be downloading more and more files, so if you can, make sure to give it more than it is recommended. Once you select your hard disk size, you want to click on create. And this will create our virtual machine. As you can see right here, we got Kali Linux added. And here are all of the details about our virtual machine. Before we proceed and start it, there is only one more thing that we want to do. Remember this ISO image or this operating system? We need to somehow add it to our virtual machine. So that once we install the operating system, it knows which one to install. So to do that, we navigate back to VirtualBox. We select the virtual machine and we click on settings. Now you will notice that there are a bunch of settings right here, which we are going to explain later on. But for now on, you want to navigate to the storage. And here is where we want to add our ISO image of Cal Linux. To do that, we want to go to this controller IDE and this empty part, we want to right click and remove attachment. It will ask us, are we sure that we want to delete it? We click on remove. And after it, we want to click on this disk shape with a plus. Just click on it. And it will open up this smaller window where we want to find our Cal Linux ISO image and select it. In case you don't see it right here, you want to click on add. And you can simply just find it on your machine. In my case, as we can see, it is right here in the download section. But in your case, if you moved it to a desktop, it will probably be on desktop as well. Since I have it in both locations, I will select the desktop one, double click it, and you will see it being added right here. Then you select it here and click on choose. You should see it being added right here under the controller IDE, as it says Cal Linux 2020.2. And once you see it, you can simply just click on OK. And now our virtual machine is fully created. All we are left to do in the next video is to install the Cal Linux operating system. After that, we're going to be ready to use our hacking machine.